Hello, everyone, and thank you for listening to IFFGD's COVID-19 program. The information and resources shared during this podcast should not replace any medical care you are receiving. It is important to always consult with your doctor and other health care providers before making decisions about your treatment. So today we have the pleasure of speaking with the Boston-based registered and licensed dietitian, as well as a New York Times best-selling author, Kate Scarlatta. Kate specializes in low FODMAP diet and digestive health conditions, including IBS, celiac disease, inflammatory bowel disease, and small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, also referred to as SIBO. So thank you so much for joining us today, Kate. It's my pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. As many states are beginning to reopen and we continue to face the daily impacts of COVID-19, the concerns of being infected is probably at its highest amongst the general public, especially um, for those with compromised immune systems. And during this program, um, dietitian Kate Scarlatta will provide us with a better understanding of what we can do and our diet to support our immune system during this pandemic. Um, Kate, so what are some of the key functions of our immune system and how might the GI system also play a role? Well, I think it's an important um, uh, fact to understand that about 60 to 70% of our immune system is actually located in the GI tract. Um, The majority of these immune cells are found in tissue called gut-associated lymphoid tissue. And um, the immune system itself is really vital for monitoring signs of invasion. And invasion could be uh, a pathogen such as a virus or bacteria that could cause infection. But our immune system also helps our body recognize and accept foods that are acceptable to eat. They're outside um, components that we're bringing into our body, and it's our immune system that helps us recognize that this is good food and it's okay. We do not need to exert an immune reaction to it. Um, So when we think about the just the nature that the the gut bacteria that the gut plays such a big part in the immune system mm-hmm. we also need to be thinking that what we eat and what we feed our gut microbes may impact our immune function and it looks like a diet that's rich in plants a variety of fruits and vegetables and well balanced is really likely the best diet um, for the immune system to mean, you know, to support its functioning. Mm -hmm. There is no special diet or supplement that will prevent COVID-19 or cure COVID-19. So I think that that's an important differentiation. We're supporting our immune system with good nutrition. Um, There is no known science to say that a certain supplement will prevent COVID-19. The best thing to prevent COVID-19 is really social distancing and washing our hands regularly. Yeah. Yeah. And you touched on some really good uh, good point there where there's no proven uh, diet out there that, um, that can cure COVID-19. Um, and, and part of that Can you explain to us what nutrients might be important for our listeners to include in their diet to support the the function of our immune system? Absolutely. I think first and foremost, it's important to understand that it comes down to really a well-balanced diet. So if you're eating adequate macronutrients such as complex carbohydrates, adequate protein and healthy fats, and of course, a variety of fruits and vegetables, you're likely going to be meeting all the nutrients and micronutrient needs to support your um, immune system. Um, so focusing on things like, you know, rice, potatoes, tortillas, quinoa for complex carbohydrates, um, firm tofu or eggs, canned chickpeas, canned lentils. I'm thinking of like low FODMAP foods that many of um, the IFFGD community may be following, Um, healthy fats like salmon and flaxseed, chia seeds, walnuts, 
um, and monounsaturated fats such as olive oil, seeds, and nuts. Um, there are, I know you want to touch base on some specific nutrients, and we'll, I guess we'll do that in the next question, but I think it's important for um, the listeners to understand really just a nice balanced meal will help you meet your nutritional needs, your macronutrient, the big nutrients, the fiber, the complex carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. But when there's a variety of balance, it will also help you meet those micronutrient um, needs and specific nutrients that may play a little bit greater role in maintaining our immune system. Right, right. And to maintain that balance that you're talking about um, to support the immune system, what might be some of the, the key vitamins um, that we can include in their diet to support our immune system and to help um, our ability to fight off those infections? Right. So the, the, we don't want to have nutrient deficiencies. Right. And certainly there's a subset of people um, with GI disorders that may have malabsorption. An example would be someone that maybe has small intestinal bacterial overgrowth that can impair absorption of fats that may decrease vitamin D and vitamin A storage, inflammatory bowel disease, which may reduce zinc levels, celiac disease patients may also be low in zinc. And these deficiencies can impair or lead to an, an impaired functioning immune system. So we do want to make sure that um, not necessarily we're, we're running out to get supplements for these nu um, nutrients, but that we're, we're including these nutrients in our diet. So specifically to vitamins that support our immune system, vitamin C, vitamin A, as well as vitamin D. So I want to just break these down a little bit. Vitamin C um, is found in broccoli, potatoes, kiwi, fruit, and tomatoes. Bell peppers are another source. Vitamin A we can get from broccoli, carrots, cantaloupe, dairy products, um, and fortified cereals. Vitamin D we can also get from the diet, but as a general rule, uh, we get the most of our vitamin D from the sun. And depending on where you live, for instance, I live in New England, we don't get a lot of um, vitamin D made during the months from November through April. So many of us are on the low end if we're relying on the sunshine. Um, so if you've been told in the past by your physician that your vitamin D levels are low, I would circle back with them and, and, and start a supplement if they suggest that's necessary. But it's not unusual um, to require a little vitamin D supplements, particularly if you live in climates um, in areas that experience winter. Um, so those are vitamins. I do want to talk briefly about some other micronutrients such as uh, zinc and selenium that also support the immune system. And having a low zinc level can occur, like I mentioned, in inflammatory bowel disease and untreated celiac disease. Um, most of us get enough zinc, but it is a nutrient that you should pay attention to. Good sources are beef, pork, chicken, chickpeas can be a good source as well as pumpkin seeds. And then there's also some amino acids. So amino acids are the building blocks of protein and specific amino acids that also have been shown to support the immune system include glutamine, which is found in meat, beans, and fish, and in dairy products, and arginine, which is also found in fish, beef, poultry, some whole grains, um, dairy products, and beans. So um, again, you'll see there's some commonalities. Having good protein sources can really help meet some of these micronutrient and vitamin um, and amino acid needs. So a well-balanced diet can really help make sure that we are getting the nutrients that we need to support our immune system. Yeah. And like right now, many of us are really practicing social distancing and to meet those requirements, it definitely takes a few trips to the grocery store. And a lot of us are trying to limit the potential exposure to uh, the coronavirus. But um, what are some staple items uh, that our listeners could 
put on their list uh, to aid in the immune and overall health while helping to manage any GI symptoms as well? Absolutely. I think, you know, what what we're really encouraging in the dietitian community is foods that have greater sta- um, shelf-stable lifetime or that you can freeze. So things like canned tuna or canned salmon can be helpful protein sources. Um, we've been relying a lot on frozen chicken burgers because I really love them and it's a quick, easy, protein-rich um, meal that I can keep safely for a long time in my freezer. Um, firm tofu is another great protein source and can stay for quite some time in the fridge. Canned chickpeas, canned lentils are lower FODMAP versions of vegetarian proteins as well. And then, of course, nut butters are great to have on hand and have great shelf life, such as peanut butter and almond butter. Complex carbohydrates like gluten-free pasta, if that's a necessity, or oats or polenta and rice are great to keep in the house and have, you know, a great um, shelf life. So it can really be helpful. And I also find um, keeping a stash of frozen fruits and vegetables has been really helpful for my family to maintain our produce consumption or selecting produce that is a little hardier um, than others, such as red cabbage has has a good sturdiness to it or baked potatoes you can keep them in a dark room for um you know for a week or two um and they still maintain um you know deliciousness and um you can and use them for quite some time um and cantaloupe and pineapple tend to have a thicker skin kept in the refrigerator can last a little bit longer Um, So uh, carrots are another example of a hearty vegetable that lasts long in the crisper. So being strategic with what you're purchasing so that it has greater uh, duration um, and food safety um, qualities to it that you can keep for a longer time can be really helpful. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's so important, the shelf life, and especially right now, um, with what we're all going through and trying to limit those those trips to the store. Um, and then there's also some people, part of the GI community, um, who might be on a liquid diet at this time due to other health reasons. Um, what could they include to help them consume a balanced diet and adequate nutrition to support their overall health and immune system? You know, it comes down to the same basic um, sort of principles that I've drilled down throughout this interview, and that is maintaining a balanced diet. And you can do that on a liquid diet. For instance, if, if I had a client that required a liquid diet, I might encourage a smoothie that they utilize some frozen fruit that they tolerate, include maybe a little healthy fat with um, some nut butters into a smoothie. They could add great protein with lactose-free yogurt or milk or even Greek yogurt, which has lower lactose um, and probiotics um, compared to traditional yogurt, which might be a little high in lactose for some of your listeners. Um, Blending this together um, can make a really delicious smoothie drink that has a little bit of everything. It has Um, some nice carbohydrates and fiber from the fruit, some protein from the nut butters, lactose-free milk or lactose-free yogurt, um, and healthy fats as well through nut butters or blended seeds, or even a little flaxseed oil if um, the nut and seed blends don't work for certain people due to other restrictions. So be thinking again about that balanced diet um, model, and but put it into the liquids to help um, meet the nutrient needs. Yeah, yeah. And for individuals living with um, chronic illnesses and compromised immune systems, what are some precautions that they could take um, as a general rule right now? So, you know, first and foremost, just um, taking care of themselves with adequate sleep and, and washing their hands and social distancing um, first and foremost. There are also food safety precautions that should be, you know, always, always at the top of their list. Um, there is no evidence via the, the, the Food and Drug Administration 
of um, food or food packaging being associated with the transmission of COVID-19. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's important to note. Um, but I think the importance of food safety rules um, are always and should always be on the forefront of people with chronic illness or compromised immune systems. So this is, you know, remind, remember to clean your foods, wash your produce, separate raw foods from raw produce so that you're not, if chicken maybe has salmonella in a raw form, you don't want to transmit that salmonella by using the same cutting board to cut your lettuce that you just cut your chicken. So you always want to separate raw meats um, from raw produce, separate um, cutting boards and um, clean the cooking area. That's very imp imp important using a disinfectant, whether it's a bleach spray or a disinfectant wipe um, on your counters as well. And um, one thing to keep in mind that cooking foods does kill any virus. So if you want to be particularly um, prudent, um, you know, cooking foods, um, or if you are getting takeout, I would choose foods that are cooked and not handled. A lot of restaurants are saying, you know, we'll cook the item and it, there's no touch between that item. They're only using utensils to put it inside the box to then give it to you. Yeah. But cooked foods will be lower risk. And then if you're preparing food at home, remember, uh, it's not to sit out, sit on your countertop for, for hours on end. Always chill your foods and keep them at safe um, temperatures um, so you minimize risk of foodborne illness as well. Those are some really good um, tips and advice. And I think throughout the entire um, podcast here, you've really touched on some really good points about maintaining a balanced diet and making sure your cooking service is clean, having those staple items that you can always um, pull from while we're still practicing social distancing. And also just keeping in mind the food safety that um, we should all practice as a general rule. but um, do you have any other advice that you would like to provide the listeners with at this time? I think, you know, one of the most important things that, um, that I've tried to incorporate and encourage um, patients that I work with is to be gentle with yourself. This is a, this is a crisis and it's stressful. And when you're living in a stressful situation, it's exhausting. Yeah. Um, so don't um, put great expectations on your ability to maybe operate at the same pace that you were when we weren't in a crisis. Um, remember that self-care is really important during stressful times. I think it's also really important, if possible, to get out in nature. Um, a light walk is really good for your body and your soul. Um, so I've really tried to incorporate daily walks on my end. And if I don't feel like it, I don't push myself. Um, I think it's also very important to put a hydration plan into place. Yeah. We can get busy with our work schedules, our schedules thrown off a little bit working from home. Um, make sure that you even set maybe your phone for three alarms during the day to remind you to get up, stretch, and grab a glass of water to hydrate. Um, but I think more, you know, most importantly, just give yourself a little grace and some wiggle room because this is, um, this is some challenging times that we're going through and, um, you know, you have to not put a lot of extra stress on yourself, just uh, expecting you to be in, in top form. Cause we're all kind of just operating at about 50 to 70% of our usual capacity. That is, that's very true. And just like what you said, being kind to yourself in this moment of crisis um, has been a key point. I think a lot of people um, have been reiterating, and I think it's very important that you also touched on that as well. And um, we just want to say thank you so much to everyone who has tuned in to listen to today's COVID-19 program. Um, by IFFGD, and of course, many, many thanks to dietitian Kate Scarlotta for speaking with us and sharing uh, her unique insights on eating to support the immune system during this pandemic. So thank you so much, Kate, for um, your unique insights. Thank you so much for having me on.